Welcome back to Stephen K. De Silva Ministries. Uh, it's great to have you guys join. I'm here live, and we're going to talk today about a question that someone has sent in. I have their key piece of paper here, their secret question. And uh, actually, I began to get a few of these questions around uh, several different places. So I decided to tackle this today. This is a little touchy. This is a this is going to be a, a deep one, so let's brace ourselves. We'll let a few more folks jump on. Hey, Sally, great to have you. I'm going to have to bust out some of my big art today, so, uh, so let's see what we're going to do. Hey, Wayne, welcome back. All right, let's get going. I've got a lot to talk about. I'm going to try to keep it short. But what the question that came to me is this. How do I become a bigger giver without doing so? To my own detriment. This is a. This was a person probably in his uh, middle years, maybe maybe forties. Uh, but it is also a question I consistently get among younger men and women, older folks. These are Christians just wondering how is it that we give? How does this actually work? And so I want to tackle that with this uh, opening question. You see, this is complicated. This, the answer to this question is complicated because it takes us down many different roads, like the subject of bread and seed, the difference between sowing and what you put in the ground and what you eat. It takes us into the territory of devotion to Christ and just kind of our willingness to sacrifice for others and, and care about our brothers and other people. But what I want to do is take a different angle. I want to talk about something that is around the heart of this matter, and I think a cultural reality that we need to think about as Christians. Now, I'm going to posture this conversation in the context of Western Christianity and Jewish ideals, okay? And so, let's get started. You see, I think that whenever you talk about this question, we have to introduce this idea. I call it the charity wheel, and the charity wheel is really simple. This is just around the subject of what comes into your hand in order to give. And so you see what is coming in is the plus. There's the coming into my hand and what comes out. This is just around the subject of giving. How do I give? Uh, it's, we're just getting super simple. Not where I give or what I give to. Just the idea of when money comes in and I give it. How does this work? How do I do this and grow it to a higher place? And while I do that, I seem like, uh, I feel like hidden in this question is, when I do that, I never seem to grow because it always pulls down my finances. So what I want to do next is go to a Bible reference that actually addresses this thing. And for those of you who are students, I want you to write down Philippians 4, 12 through 14. This is a powerful section, and we will refer to it, but I want you to go back and really chew on that at some point. Philippians 4, 12 through 14. Paul uncovers a secret. Paul talks about being, I've learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. So this passage really talks about this idea in two ways. He talks about being filled, and he talks about being going hungry. And I identify that as the charity wheel. This is the ins and outs of his daily living and thinking about how to sow. But at the same time, he introduces another idea, and that is the idea of being in abundance or being in lack. Now, this is classic Jewish ideas, the idea of abundance and lack. And you see the little charity wheel is moving up and down on this axis. So now we have the two ideas, the charity wheel spinning, filled and going hungry, but also the movement up and down this, this axis from a, between abundance and lack. You see, this is a fundamental difference between a Jewish mindset and a Western mindset. And here's why. If we draw two of these side by side, and forgive me for uh, actual Jewish scholars, okay? I'm just trying to identify or put my finger on something 
and probably oversimplified. But I want to just idea, make this idea in two columns. Here's a Jewish idea, and here's a Western idea of that axis that Paul was talking about, in abundance or in lack. And you see, on the Western side, we perceive zero at the bottom. When you hit the bottom, you are in lack. Zero is here. But for the Jew, they think of zero somewhere in the middle. You see, for them, they think, how much do I take to actually build my life and operate it on a sustainable long-term basis? And that identi ad identifies for them a, a, a line that they would draw. And that determines the difference between the top half and the bottom half, abundance or lack. It builds this kind of an illustration where if I have more than enough, I'm on top, I'm above. If I have less than enough, I'm down here and I'm in need of others to help me. You see, the Jewish idea around their generosity equals their welfare system. That's how they care for one another is through their generosity system. And in America, in the West, we think very differently because we have relegated the welfare system to our government. It's no longer part of the responsibility for most people of faith when they think around in their mind, who are they caring for? So this idea of sustainability is very different in the Jewish communities than it is in the West. I think the West has at its base value, like fundamentally grown into us, is a value for vulnerability. We feel it is better to be in a place of weakness. Now, these are Christians I'm talking about, in a place of vulnerability and weakness because it makes us dependent on God. I think that grew from an early Puritan history. But if you look at the Jews, they feel very differently. They want sustainability because through generations of hardship, they have learned that we need to be strong enough we need to grow our capacity in order to support other communities of Jews that are in trouble when trouble comes. So sustainability is grown into the Jewish mindset the way vulnerability has grown into the identity of the Western giver. So what do these two ideas mean? And how does this relate to this gentleman's question that we opened with? How do I become a bigger giver without doing so to my own detriment? My answer would be, consider where you belong on this axis. You consider best answers like these when you sit at the feet of the Father and ask Him, where are we supposed to be? You see, I think many Christians feel they are to be down below a sustainable number and their little economic, their little charity wheel is turning down here. That's not wrong or evil or foolish. That's just where they feel conviction, where they belong. If a person wants to grow, you need to understand that, that you are talking about moving above the line of sustainability. You're trying to grow to a place where your charity wheel is turning, and yet you have what you need to maintain your long-term giving strengths. Yeah, it comes down to this. One day I was in the chapel in a certain place. It doesn't matter where, but I was praying about giving. And God showed me a table with a small pile of beans on the table. And he said, how much will you sow in your lifetime? And I saw, and I saw this pile of beans. And I realized that's probably the cumulative total of all the tithes and offerings I give throughout my entire lifetime, if I stack them and sum them all, it would equal this. And God said, good. Now, what would happen if you created a giving engine that will sustain itself beyond your lifetime, beyond your children's lifetime? A charity wheel that is so big, its function is to grow and give. And I realized that my pile of beans in my lifetime would only be this big, but with an idea 
of growing bigger in my sustainability and in my long-term vision for giving, I would give a mountain of giving over my life generation and my children and their children. This is my thought and this is how I would answer that question. If you want to become a bigger giver, you need to climb above vulnerability and into a place where you have capacity. Capacity to give and give so much more than you can from a place of vulnerability. Well, I hope that makes sense. I hope that helps you guys. If you uh, want to submit your own questions to be answered, why don't you look on the uh, link I've attached to this Facebook Live and it takes you to a message or a contact page in my website. You can write your question there and I have a pile of them. I probably have 200 of these questions now. So it'll go on a pile. I can't promise it'll happen quick, but I can promise that we'll eventually touch it in some way. Well, that's good. I think we got through this, this whole little delicate matter, but what I want to do is pray for you really quick and ask that God would quickly and clearly speak to you on where he wants you to build your charity wheel. Father in heaven, I know you're hearing and I know you're leading and guiding us, God. And you are capable of correcting us when we step across the line or we misunderstand. So Father, I'm asking that you would meet each of us, every one of us, one by one. You would meet with us and teach us how to build a charity wheel that moves up and down according to your great wisdom and your leadership. Father, I pray that like Paul, the apostle in Philippians 4, that we would learn the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. Father, like Paul, would you wrap us in this prayer so that we could do all things through you who strengthens us. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. God bless you guys, and God bless your prosperous soul. Cut. Okay, we're done. We're just going to go look here and see who's joined. I, I see my sister. Hey, Ann, how are you doing, girl? Casey, hello. Oh, Casey, it's so good to see you on here, girl. Yarenes, yay, sister. <clears throat> Yarenes, excuse me, from New York. It's great to have you. Vicky from Hawaii, hello. Sherry, and oh, here's a new name. Bazena Plaza. Ooh, where is that from? That sounds Brazilian. Well, we'll see where that might be from. Hey, I've got a couple of trips coming up. I still got to get them listed on my website itinerary, but uh, what is listed is a trip to Guatemala City. What is not listed is a right on the heels of that is a trip to Mexico City. So I'm going to go down and meet with our Latino and Latina brothers and sisters, and uh, I just would uh, covet your prayers and uh, you know just go with me as as I, in prayer as I go. I'm really excited. We're going to do a bunch of fun, prosperous soul stuff. And there's very few communities that are more hungry for understanding the idea of breaking poverty and getting into a place of a prosperous soul than South America, Mexico. All right. I love those people. I can't wait to go. I love you guys, and thanks for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm Stephen K. De Silva, and you're probably wondering, why have I never heard this information before? Well, now you can by going up into this corner and subscribing to this channel. Or you can go to this corner and watch the next video. There is tons of information I'm giving you. Go check it out and go deeper. Or better yet, go to the link below and go check out my website. I've got some free stuff on there. Go get that and go see lots of resources so you can finally master your money. Hey, I gotta go record another video. I'll see you soon, bye.